In this particular session, I am going to talk about what is the general structure or template for solving a problem using recursion. In addition to that, I shall give you a number of tips which will really help you understand recursion easily. This has been done after a lot of study and analysis as well as a lot of cumulative experience. So the general template for a recursive function is it's going to be generally void, int, float, depending on what that recursion is doing. You're going to have the recursive function name. The first thing you should decide is ask yourself, how long should this recursion continue? That is called as the base case. When the base case happens, the base case will generally have a return statement and there'll be no call to any function or there'll be no recursive call in the base case. So the base case is true, then I'm going to return and slowly I'm going to start closing down the recursion process. Else, I am going to keep calling the recursive function so that the bigger problem is broken down into a number of sub problems and I can try to find the solution to the sub problems, combine those solutions and find the solution to the entire problem. So to summarize, in order to write a recursive function, you should have first a very clear idea of what is the base case or when to stop. Both are the same. In the base case, you will never have a call to a recursive function. In the alternate case, you will have a call to a recursive function so that the bigger problem is broken down into smaller parts to find a solution. Now, the best way to understand recursion is don't think of this function being called repeatedly. Think of or visualize as though there are multiple copies of this recursive function being executed or running at the parallelly at the same time or think of multiple copies running to solve smaller parts or smaller versions of the problem. Now when all the smaller problems are solved okay when this this is a call to break down the problem into smaller parts when all these calls or when all the smaller problems are solved then we have to call the stop case or the base case. From the base case, we start joining, adding or merging the solutions to find solution to the complete problem. Then that is what I've said. Once we return from the base case, we combine all these solutions to form solution to the complete problem. Now let's take a look at some of the tips which are key to understanding recursion. The first tip is always think of that the copies of this multiple copies of the recursive function are in execution. Don't try to think the same function and go through it multiple times. Think of multiple copies in execution using the stack frame or the activation record concept. And since multiple copies of the same function are executing, they are going to have different values of local variables within them because each activation record has a different state of execution or is going to contain different variable values. Now the important thing in recursion is where students generally make the mistake is the earlier copies are always going to wait for the results of the from the future copies to as to complete their calculation. The meaning of this is 5 factorial is waiting for 4 factorial, 4 factorial is waiting for 3 factorial, 3 factorial is waiting for 2 factorial, 2 factorial is waiting for 1 factorial. When 1 factorial is calculated, I get 2 factorial. When 2 factorial is calculated, I get 3 factorial. When 3 factorial is calculated, I get 4 factorial. When 4 factorial is calculated, I get 5 factorial. So what it says is the older copies are waiting for the baby copies to complete calculation so that the older ones can complete their calculation. Now, the minute you hit the base case or the return, the execution begins to wind up or start reversing. You are trying to, from the end now, trying to combine all the solutions. So this is very important. If there is no base case, your execution will never wind up. It will go into something called as an infinite recursion and your program is going to definitely crash. Now, this is very important. 
if you are having a recursion call which is very very large or never ends the stack box which stores all the frames or the data frames of the activation record is going to run out of space when it once it runs out of space your program is going to crash because the stack does not have any more space to store your activation record or your stack frame the final solution always involves combining the return from all the sub solutions so if you looked at factorial each return was helping calculate the result for the next return so the return is used to combine the solutions of all the problems which have been solved already now the key to understanding recursion is first is understanding that multiple copies are in execution then next is you should be able to either draw a recursion trace which i showed you with factorial and sum of numbers and or you should be able to draw the stack box along with the stack frame or the activation record because why it is important is for every call of the function there is one stack frame or one activation record created so technically what it is called is for every function call is referred to as instance of a function so every function executing so i have one factorial but there could be 10 factorials running at the same time one calculating factorial of 10 one calculating factorial of 9 one calculating factorial of 8 one calculating factorial of 7 so on so each of those 7 6 5 factorial calculations are known as instances of the same function now the stack frame members exist for every instance of the function so you will have a stack frame record or an activation record for factorial of 10 or factorial of 9 or factorial of 8. Suppose I am calculating factorial of 10. I am going to have 10 activation records because one activation record for factorial of each number. Okay. Then you just need to have an idea about what the activation record maintains. The activation record maintains the status or state of that particular function copy which is being executed so each activation record or stack frame has a lot of complexity but the basic important aspects you need to remember is it contains copies or values of local variables the parameters which are passed to that particular function for execution so each activation record most importantly is going to contain local variables and parameters being used by that instance of the function then last when a return exists okay each suppose lot of recursion does, does not necessarily need to have a return call if you looked at printing numbers in sequence and reverse they did not have the return in the recursion call but factorial and sum of numbers had the return so if a return exists then what happens is each function above gives a value the returned value to the function below it factorial of 1 gives its return value to factorial of 2 return factorial of 2 return gives its value to factorial of 3 return factorial of 3 return gives its value to factorial of 4 return and factorial of 4 return gives its value to factorial of 5 return so this way we are able to combine the solutions and then find the answer to the problem so i hope you are able to understand what is recursion what is the basic template or structure for recursion and the important tips for understanding recursion just to summarize key tip is think there are many copies of the same function executing the many copies are known as instances of the function each instance of a function has an activation record with different values of local variable and parameters for that particular copy okay and when you're returning you're combining the solution for each return merging it and then giving a single answer at the end so i hope this clarifies your understanding of recursion